I mean, it's it's impressive to see because yeah. in 20, when did I see that 35 the first time? I think it was 2015. I showed up to a red flag. And back then, you know, you just heard of these things and I taxied by and there were two of these things with their canopy going the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, the pilots had these like black Darth Vader helmets on and it was just kind of <laughs> mind blowing. And we did some exercises with these guys and that 35s went in, they killed everything. And that really was the, <laughs> the reason why I switched over from that F-16, which, you know, F-16 is still my favorite fighter. You know, yeah. it's, it's the one I grew up wanting to fly. So it's my favorite fighter, but the F-35 is a much more capable. It's the best. Yeah, I agree. The F-16 is the, the best pilot's airplane, but the F-35 is the one you want to go to war in. Is you know, yeah, high threat war. F 16 stripped down hot rod, John Boyd, yeah. back there, uh, you know, with his book, you know, it's stripping right. everything down, no ladder, everything is designed to just do BFM dog fighting out there. So it, it's a fun aircraft to fly in. But even F 16, we put all kinds of different bells and whistles on it, right. it's a lot heavier now, right? Um, so we kind of fly the F 16, at least block 50s, like fit gen fighters. So it's a lot more your systems operator trying to employ valid weapons and trying to, uh, you know, have information dominance over the battle space. Um, the, uh, you, you've touched about 18 different stories. I want to talk about, you talked about F 16s and C fit controlled flight in a train. And that's when a pilot hits the ground in a perfectly good airplane. Often it's pilot's fault. He gets distracted or whatever. Um, and <laughs> I was at Luke Air Force Base and I was learning how to do Lantern. Lantern's an old system from the 90s where, really from the 80s, where you could fly a, a jet, an F-16 or an F-15E, a Strike Eagle, low altitude at night. And it was designed to go in, it was designed to fight the Soviets in Central Europe. Um, and in the early 90s, we were still using it. So I get checked out and there's one rule they have. When you're going to attack the target, you take it, normally the autopilot flies the airplane really low and you're just along for the ride. But to do the attack, you had to fly manually. So you had to push the button, come off of autopilot, and now you're flying. And they said, as soon as you come off, as soon as you start to fly, you stop looking at the targeting pod, which is the thing that's going to drop the laser guided bomb. And you just look out the window through this little soda straw infrared view and fly. So I go through this months and months long process. Uh, we had lost a pilot. Unfortunately, he died because he got fixated on the targeting pod and he flew the jet into the ground. My very first time I'm doing this solo without anybody in the back seat. I get to the IP to target run 10 miles out. I take over to fly manually. And the first thing I did was look down at the targeting pod. I just spent months being trained not to do that. And it's exactly what I started to do. And a few seconds later, I heard Betty, bitch and Betty's the lady in the cockpit that yells at you and tells you what to do. Pull up, pull up. And my head was between my knees and there was a hill between the IP and target. And I was literally flying right into that hill and the computer pulled up to save me. Jeez. So that was like the ultimate stupid thing to do. I knew I shouldn't do it and I did it anyway. And if it wasn't for the computer, I wouldn't have been saved. And the other thing I really want to talk about is auto GCAS. If I hadn't been like this, I wouldn't have been saved because the radar pod we had was on the bottom. If you were like this, the radar wouldn't have seen the ground and I would have hit the ground. We have a new system. Years later, I'm at Edwards Air Force Base flying, and as a test pilot, we have this thing called Auto GCAS, Automatic Ground Collision Avoidance System, in the year 2000. And I went out and flew it. And the bot the bottom line is the theory is they use data from STS-99, a space shuttle mission, that mapped the Earth with very accurate elevation. So they figured, well, the airplane knows where it is and you know where the ground is below you. And so it, the computer just figures out, hey, if you're gonna fly yourself into the ground, I'll take over and I'll fly it away. And there was a lot of resistance from the patch wearers. They, they're like, I don't want the jet computer flying my jet. What if I'm in combat? What if I need to do this? Well, the bottom line is we, we don't ever lose fighters in combat from enemy action anymore. We lose it from people flying themselves into the ground. So the Air Force didn't fund this system for a decade and we lost 19 more F-16s. And finally, in 2010, I think they started putting money into it. And thank God the F-35 has it. I had a, there was a really famous YouTube video maybe five years ago or something where a F-16 guy in Tucson was out on a training sortie and the instructor's yelling, pull up, pull up. And the, the pilot had put himself to sleep. He pulled so many Gs, the blood came out of his head and he fell asleep. 
and the airplane was going into the ground and all of a sudden vroom, it recovered and came up and auto G I think that was like the first big well-known save. So I, that's a long story for me talking, but your no, thoughts okay. on auto yeah, GCAS is an incredible system. So I, I was, uh, in at Shaw Air Force Base flying F-16 Block 50s uh, when that came out. And there was resistance. People were like, ah, I don't know. There's some edge cases where this thing doesn't work. But I think it's proved itself um, in the, what, six or seven years that we've had it. We've had uh, nine saves. Ten people's lives have been saved. One was a D model. And the footage is amazing. Like these, these people, I don't think people understand flying a fighter just how many what nine G's feels like. So I, I weigh about 200 pounds, 230 right. with my gear on. That's over 2000 pounds of force. If you put a scale under my butt, just squeezing me down, you know, it's painful on the body, but mostly it's the blood being pulled out of your brain yes. into your extremities. And if you pass out, you know, you're going to be incapacitated for about 30 seconds. It takes about 20 seconds to the speeds we fly to impact the ground. Right. And so the, the footage is incredible. These people pass out you know, they're in full afterburner, just 45 degrees, nose low. They're ticking through uh, supersonic speeds. Right. And then uh, auto GCAS will take over. I mean, it's only supposed to do like a 5G recovery, but a few of the ones that I've seen, you know, it's been eight, nine Gs recovering these pilots. And it's, yeah, it's saved 10 people's lives. We have it in F-35. So uh, amazing system. And it's unfortunate that we had the technology 20 years ago to be able to, to put in and we didn't do it.